Hello and welcome back to this channel. Dear students, this is the quick revision session for the photo detectors. In the earlier videos, we have discussed the basic concepts related to optical cable as well as we have studied various types of light sources. This is the fiber optic cable. At one end, source is connected. The function of source which we have already studied is to convert electrical signal into light rays. <coughs> then this light rays travels through the fiber optic cable. At the output end, we have to connect a suitable detector. So detector is a device which is used to convert the incoming optical signal that is incoming photons into electrical signal back into electrical signal. Now, what are the basic requirements of the photo detector? First is it should have high sensitivity at the operating temperature. Second, linear response over wide range. Third, large electrical response. We know that the output of detector is electrical signal. So its efficiency should be as high as possible so that you will get a large electrical output. So it is large electrical response. Then short response time to obtain suitable bandwidth. That means the action should be quick. This action is conversion of optical signal into light rays. <clears throat> Next, minimum noise by the detector. Many detectors produces large amount of uh, dark current. So this is again considered as a noise signal. So detector, selected detector should produce very less amount of noise. Then stability of the performance characteristics. All the performance characteristics of the selected detector should be stable. The detector should have a small size, very much clear. We want to connect this detector to the fiber optic cable. The diameter of optical cable is very small. So the size of a detector should be small so that it can be easily connected to the optical cable. Then <clears throat> low bias voltage, the requirement of bias voltage for the detector should be as low as possible and it should have high reliability and detector should have low cost. Now let us discuss few important characteristics of photo detector. First characteristic is responsivity. We know that the output of photo detector is electrical quantity, usually a current and input is the photons that is light rays. So responsivity is ratio of detector output to the detector input. Next is noise equivalent power. It is incident optical power required to produce S by N that is signal to noise ratio of unity that is 1 in 1 hertz bandwidth. It can be also defined as the ratio of noise current to the peak that is maximum radiant sensitivity. Third characteristic is detectivity. It's simple. It is reciprocal of noise equivalent power that is NAP. Next is the dark current. As we discussed, even if the light rays are not falling on the detector. Still, some of the current is generated at the output. This current is under the darkness condition. So it is called the dark current denoted by ID. Next is the spectral response. It is the ability of a detector to give response to the incident light of different wavelengths. So these are few important characteristics of photo detectors. Now we will discuss the conventional PN junction photodiode. This is the diagram. Uh, related to conventional PN junction photodiode. As shown in this diagram, it has P-type and N-type material. It is uh, just similar, very much similar to the normal diode apart from slight differences. In between P and N, there is a depletion region. The light rays, that means photons, which are represented by H nu. This symbol stands for nu. Nu is the frequency. H is the Planck's constant. These photons are allowed to fall on the depletion region. Look at the connection. P type is connected to the negative terminal of battery. This is the external battery. N side is connected to the positive terminal of battery. So when photons fall on the depletion region, then the electrons are released from the atoms and holes are created. That means in a simple language, we can say whenever the photons are incident, then electron hole pairs are generated. These holes which are positively charged gets attracted to the negative terminal of external battery whereas electrons which are having negative charge gets attracted to the positive terminal of battery and because of this motion of holes and electrons the conventional current starts flowing through the external circuit. But this happens whenever the photodiode is connected in reverse bias mode. This is the graph in reverse bias condition graph of voltage versus current. We know the concept of dark current. Whenever 
external light is not falling on the detector still a small amount of current is generated at the output that is called the dark current as you go on increasing the incident uh, light rays or incident number of photons then the graph is like this i have drawn the graph for different values like 10,000 lumens per uh, meter square that is the light intensity then 15,000 then 20,000 so this is about the conventional pn junction photodiode the next device is pin photodiode it is very much similar to the conventional pn junction photodiode apart from slight changes as the name indicates this is pin photodiode so between p region and n region i mean p plus and n plus region one intrinsic layer i layer is created this is undoped intrinsic region otherwise the working remains same as that of conventional photodiode it is reverse biased because p side is connected to negative terminal of battery n side is connected to positive terminal of battery as far as the resistivity is concerned then the resistivity of i layer that means this middle layer see due to the insertion of i layer width of the depletion region gets increased so resistivity of i layer is from 10 ohm to 100 kilo ohm per centimeter whereas the resistivity of p plus and n plus region is less than 1 ohm this is the graph of voltage versus current for the pin photodiode now let us discuss the noise currents related to this pin photodiode so the first type of noise is the photon noise the incoming photons which are falling on the photo detector are not arriving at the same time there are random variations or fluctuations in the arrival rate of incoming photons which produces the noise uh, at the output current so that is called photon noise second is short noise it is due to the ambient light which produces the dark current we already discussed the concept of dark current so that is given as short current or short noise current is square root of 2 qb in the bracket id plus ip id is the dark current ip is the photon current that is generated due to the incoming photons q is the charge of electron b is the bandwidth third type of noise is johnson noise under the thermal equilibrium conditions the charge carriers have random motions that means there are fluctuations in the motions of charge carriers under thermal equilibrium conditions so this generates the thermal noise or johnson noise which is square root of 4 ktb upon rt where k is the boltzmann's constant 1.38 into 10 raised to minus 23 rt is the total resistance that is addition of source and load resistance t is the operating temperature b is the bandwidth then generation recombination noise there are fluctuations due to the variations in the recombination rate which produces generation recombination noise which is given as or it is also referred as the total noise which is square root of uh, thermal noise square plus uh, short noise square. Next device is APD that is avalanche photodiode. In case of conventional PN junction photodiode as well as pin photodiode gain is not provided. So to obtain the gain or to get the multiplied output APDs are used. This is the constructional details of the APD. This is P plus region, N plus region. These P plus and N plus regions are heavily doped. It is reverse matched because P plus is connected to negative terminal of battery. N plus is connected to positive terminal of battery. One typical layer that is pi layer is inserted below this P plus region. This is the P region. So this lower two regions P and N plus regions are called this region is called highly resistive region. The photons incident light is falling on the top P plus layer. We know that whenever the photon is falling, electron hole pairs are generated. Width of pi layer is more compared to the other layers. So more number of electron hole pairs are generated in the pi region. These electron hole pairs or these charge carriers travels with their saturation velocity in the direction of applied electric field. When they enters into the highly resistive region, they collides with the lattice. That means they collides with the structure of a material and again new electron hole pairs are generated. Thus, multiplication of electron and hole pair takes place which increases the output. This is the avalanche phenomena. Now some important parameters related to this. First is impact ionization coefficient. We know that the original electron hole pairs are generated in the pi region. 
then these carriers move into the highly resistive region and generates new electron hole pairs, new charge carriers. But this requires certain amount of time period. So alpha, that is impact ionization coefficient, is reciprocal of or one upon average distance traveled by electron and holes to generate new electron hole pairs because certain distance is required to travel for this uh, electron hole pairs and then to generate the new electron hole pairs or it is also defined as number of secondary electron hole pairs to or per unit length. Response time. It's simple. It is the time required by the photodiode to produce the response. Actually response time in APD is more because of this avalanche uh, process. Next is threshold ionization energy. Certain minimum amount of energy is required to perform this multiplication process. So it is related to threshold ionization energy. Last is multiplication factor. We discussed that more number of electron hole pairs are generated. That means multiplication of charge carrier takes place. So it is the ratio of output photocurrent to the input photocurrent and multiplication coefficient is denoted by M. Next is different noise phenomena taking place in case of APD. First is the short noise. This noise is basically created due to primary current. Primary current includes the photo current that is IPH, dark current that is ID or background current that is IB. The mathematical equation is I short is square root of 2 Q. Q is charge of electron IPH plus IB plus ID. We already discussed meaning of uh, each and every term. G square G is the gain provided by the APD. F is the noise figure into B. B is the bandwidth. Second type of noise is the thermal noise. As the name indicates, it is due to the variation in the temperature. So, it, or you may say like this, the thermal noise is generated due to the change in the resistance of the device and it is given by I thermal is square root of 4 KTB upon R equivalent. R equivalent is equivalent resistance, K is Boltzmann's constant, T is temperature and B is the bandwidth. Then avalanche noise. We have discussed the basic concept that primary uh, electron hole pairs are generated. They have to travel certain distance and they will cause impact ionization and generate new electron hole pairs. These are secondary electron hole pairs. But the generation or number of secondary electron hole pairs that are generated is not fixed. There are fluctuations. So the variations in the number of secondary charge carriers which are generated due to this avalanche process creates the noise which is called the avalanche noise. This chart shows the comparison between pin photodiode and APD that is avalanche photodiode. First part is in case of pin photodiode intrinsic layer that is I layer is placed between two heavily doped regions whereas in case of APD pi layer is placed between two heavily doped regions then in case of pin photodiode, there is no gain provided by the device. In this case, due to avalanche multiplication process or impact ionization process, gain is provided. External amplifiers are required because there is no gain provided by the device. In this case, external amplifiers are not required. For pin photodiode, response time is less. For APD, more response time. Then pin photodiodes are less sensitive. This is more sensitive. For pin photodiode, low reverse bias is required, whereas for APD, high reverse bias is required. Then pin photodiodes have good temperature stability, whereas APD have poor temperature stability. Now the last type of photo detector is photo transistor. Like the normal transistor, photo transistor provides amplification action. So this is the symbol of photo transistor. In this case, the best terminal can be shown or it can be eliminated. The incoming light is allowed to fall on the best terminal. Whenever the light falls on the best terminal, that means photons falls on the best terminal, then electron hole pairs are generated. This constitutes, this forms uh, the current and this current is amplified by the transistor action. This is the basic principle of working of this phototransistor. The phototransistor can be used in either uh, active mode that means it is used to generate the current or it can be used in cutoff 
condition or it can be used in saturation mode in case of cut off and saturation mode the photo transistor acts as a switch but as i said if the transistor is used in active mode then in that case it generates the photo current the generated photo current depends on the following factors first factor is dc current gain of the transistor naturally if gain is more then the output will be more amplified response time it is the time required for the transistor to generate the photo current then luminous sensitivity it is related to the uh, if you can say efficiency in a simplified language so luminous sensitivity is related to efficiency and it is related to the amount of incident light falling on the photo transistor then collector base area as shown in this diagram the incoming light is falling on the base terminal so if collector base area is wide then more number of uh, photons are falling and more photo current will be generated it also depends on the wavelength of incident light this is the structure of a photo transistor this is npn transistor this is the collector region this is the emitter region base is kept open and incoming light is allowed to fall on the base terminal so this is about the working of photo transistor as i said as compared to the photo diode more amplification action will be pro provided in case of a photo transistor so dear students that's it for the quick revision session thank you thanks a lot for watching this video